welcome back to Mom Survival. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing something that I am working on for our family, and that is looking into alternative medicine or herbal medicine. This is something that I have heard about for a very long time, but I have never done my own research. I've never looked into it in depth, and I've never figured out what I can do at home to make my own medicine. And I think that's simply because I've never really had time to do it, or I've never made time to do that. And I think that's the case for a lot of us. So I'm hoping by sharing these videos, sharing the research and the information that I've found, um, it's going to help somebody else out there in the survival family. I know a lot of you have your own homesteads, or you're trying to learn how to prep, and you work really long jobs and stuff, and you just don't have the time. So I want to do kind of like a series on this channel. If you like this video, I'll continue it. Um, so make sure you give me a thumbs up or comment down below that this is helpful, but just putting out videos like this that you could at least listen to on your way to work or listen to after work or whenever you have free time instead of having to spend hours and hours of researching it yourself. Obviously, you should research it yourself, but I get it. You don't have time. So hopefully this gives you a starting point and maybe even just some information to lean you towards um, finding alter alternative ways to take care of yourself should a doctor's office or a hospital not be available or God forbid we have medical shortages with everything going on in the world. They're already talking about having over-the-counter medicine shortages this winter. And um, I've seen a lot of articles come out recently about um, even not having like cancer patient medication, insulin, all kinds of different drugs that the pharmaceuticals companies are low on because of everything going on overseas. A lot of our stuff, unfortunately, in America is made overseas. So again, just hoping I can offer... Um, some knowledge for you on here and also just some knowledge for our family that could be used as a barter item or just to save one of our lives should we not be able to get medical treatment. Purchase this book off of Amazon. It is Herbal Medicine Handbook. I will link it down below. This is just what I'm starting with. Um, there's a bazillion books out there but this is just going to be the one that I'm going off of because it's quite to the point and simple. But in today's video, I just kind of wanted to cover what is herbal medicine because that's something that I actually had to look into. And if you're new like me into looking into this, you might not know. So I am going to be reading from the, this book. I won't read through the whole thing. I won't spoil it if you want to go read it. Um, but this says herbal medicine is the oldest known form of healing. And then it goes on to say the use of herbal medicine has been documented for nearly 5,000 years. While some herbal remedies are no longer used because of their toxicity, others are still used in much the same way they were used thousands of years ago. Still, other herbal treatments have been modified to increase efficiency or offset effects. Ongo ongoing studies have shown that some herbs have even more potential to heal than earlier practitioners first believed. So brief history, I won't go through all the dates, but in 2800 BC, the Chinese started documenting using herbal medicine. 400 BCE Greeks actually started using medicine with their scientific advances of the time. So they started actually trying to concoct like medicines and stuff like that. And it became more of like on the side of what modern medicine would be. Like they were trying, they started using plants to create medicine. It wasn't just taking the herb. Um, 50 CE, the Roman Empire grew and started using the, the medical herbs in a more day-to-day -day, um, scenario. In the 1800s, monks became renowned as healers, growing vast herb gardens and transforming many monasteries into infirmaries with the herbal medicines. Uh, let's skip into the 1700s. High-profile Methodist preacher Char Charles Wesley advocates clean living and promotes herbal treatments for good medicine. Skipping even more forward to the 1900s, drug shortages during the First World War led to a renowned interest in herbal medicine. Interest wanes with the discovery of penicillin, but sur surges again as new drugs cause undescribed side effects, and more people wanted to go back to the natural way of medicating themselves. Bringing it to present day, approximately 25% of modern pharmaceuticals in use in the United States are derived from the original herbal plants used clear back when they first started being documented. And on average, one in three medica medicines prescribed by doctors in Germany is a herbal um, nature, or is in herbal nature. So even today, 
over in Europe, they're actually a lot more um, susceptible to using um, herbal medicine even more so than over here. So doctors actually combined modern medicine and using the herbal medicine um, over in Europe. And I think that's like a big discretion in the United States. Um, this book talked about at the very beginning, it says, um, modern scientific Modern scientific standards in the United States of research, hypothesis, experimentation, and analysis have not been part of the development, and Western medical experts have re regulated the use of medicine, medical herbs um, to the realm of alternative medicines. Yet modern medicine makes excellent use of many compounds that have been derived from the herbs and other plants. Still, scientists dispute their claims that they actually work better than medicine. So I just kind of find it funny that, like, even in Europe today, they're like still using these and saying they work and like, um, like American doctors are more like they don't want to admit it or they don't want to use it. And I think it's kind of like a twofold problem. Obviously, we know like big pharma makes more money off of people being sick. And so they want you to continue to take medications, even if they have side effects that could easily be, you know, um, avoided if they would give an herbal medicine. And I also think doctors some doctors, or I want to say most doctors, I'd like to believe that, genuinely want you to get better, but they only know what their training um, taught them. So in school, they didn't learn about herbal medicine. Now that's becoming more of a thing now in the, in the, like in 2023. However, most like older doctors and stuff, their schooling didn't include it. So I feel like they just kind of dismiss it because they weren't taught that. They haven't researched it themselves. A lot of doctors, unless they like specialize in something, they don't like deviate from what they learned. So I think it's kind of a twofold problem, but I just thought it was interesting. And like as modern of a society as we are, the more doctors haven't like looked back at the history and researched and all that good stuff about herbal medicine. Also I found it interesting. This book talked a lot about how across the world in all different cultures and all different languages, these people have never talked before, but they all came to the same conclusion that certain herbs worked for certain um, ailments. So they basically all came to the same conclusion and figured out without talking to each other, without, you know, conversing um, the same thing, that the same herbs were helping the same ailments. I just thought that was kind of cool and interesting. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to cover was a few, it has like a fact Thing, and this was a lot of the questions I had, so I wanted to share it in this video. Um, so one of them is, where do medical herbs come from, and can you grow them? And the answer is, most or some can be foraged, but most of the like modern um, herbs that do effectively help you are grown. So it just kind of depends, and you can you can make them at home, but it depends on what area you are on, depends your climate. Um, what time of year it is, all that good stuff, which is something we personally want to research as a family to see what, um, you know, herbal medicine we can grow in our own garden. And so that's something that you individually are going to have to research on what you can grow um, in, in your area. Another good question that answers, can everyone take herbal medicine? And it says, some people should use extreme caution when considering herbal remedies. Elderly people tend to metabolize medication differently than younger people. They should use herbal treatments cautiously. The same applies to those with immune disorders as well as to anyone who takes prescription drugs. So like anything else, do your research. This is going to have to be very personalized to you and your family and your needs. This book also covers um, like is it dangerous, can kids take it, all that good stuff. And again, it's all about what your child has, um, you know, what you have, again, just personalized and you're going to have to do your own research. on. Obviously, this video is just brushing the surface, but I hope this just gives you a little bit of history, maybe a little bit of backing so you can see that this isn't crazy to actually look into. And it is a great source to, like I said, um, grow at home in case you couldn't get to the doctor or something. But that's going to be it for today's video. I hope this was helpful. If you like these, if you want me to continue to do these and show you kind of like what we're growing, what we're putting in our garden, how we're going to use it, let me know. I do have a garlic and honey video coming out soon. I don't know if you can tell, but I am sick currently and I've been taking it. So I'm going to give you my honest opinion on that. But that's going to be it for today's video and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye.